Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Green STEM Summit. My name is Jason Oliver, and I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the architecture and interior design program here at College of the Canyons, as well as co-chair of the Santa Clarita Environmental Education Consortium, commonly known as SEEK, along with Kathy Martin from SCV Water. On behalf of the SEEK board, we wanna welcome you to this year's event, our seventh annual, which wouldn't be possible without the strong support from the Santa Clarita Community College District Board of Trustees and the ongoing leadership of our chancellor, Dr. Diane Van Cook, who is helping to guide our community towards a more sustainable and resilient future. To help get the Green STEM Summit started, we're joined by a true innovator in the field of environmental sustainability and one of the founding members of SEEK, Michael Haro, who's going to welcome us officially today. Thank you, Jason. I'm going to share my screen. Everybody see that okay? Yes, looks good. Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Again, on behalf of uh, the Santa Clarita Environmental Education Consortium, I want to welcome everyone to the seventh annual Green STEM Summit. I'd like to especially welcome and thank our middle school, high school, and college students for joining us today, along with all the teachers uh, who helped encourage and recruit student participation. You will hear from uh, an incredible lineup of STEM professionals who have volunteered their time to mentor you in a wide variety of STEM career pathways. My vision for starting SEEK was to create a sustainable green STEM education through a collaborative partnership of local business, government, academic, and community stakeholders with the mission to provide educational resources for K-14 to teachers and students to promote environmental literacy in the Santa Clarita Valley. SEEK has become an award-winning uh, model for sustainable green STEM education because of its unique partnership of community stakeholders with a common interest in environmental education. This model can be replicated in other communities around the country. All it takes is bringing together one champion from uh, the private sector and one from the public sector, preferably someone from industry and someone from a community college. Uh, SEEK encourages or uh, engages uh, rather in STEM related environmental education by leveraging student interest in the natural world and promoting sustainability practices in the community. Uh, before starting today's Green STEM Summit, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to SEEK's key sponsors and volunteers. Without the hard work, dedication, and financial support of these organizations, we would not be able to provide these outreach events. My own uh, STEM story it begins with a lower middle class kid growing up in the 60s and 70s in Colton, California, who became aware of air pollution as a sophomore in high school. I played four years of uh, high school football, and I can remember having a really hard time breathing uh, during Hell Week at the end of summer, uh, getting, preparing for the football season. Uh, because smog was really bad in, in uh, my area of Southern California. I can also remember uh, in, in the classroom uh, discussing uh, the first Earth Day that occurred in 1970, as well as the ecology movement that was just beginning to blossom. It was then I decided to pursue a career that would focus on fighting pollution so uh, after high school, I attended UCR and majored in environmental sciences. UCR or UC Riverside researchers were first to study the effects of pesticide use and smog on plants. The statewide air pollution research center 
uh, is also located at UCR. And, and you can see a, a picture of my professor, Dr. James Pitts, in the upper left there, showing then Governor Ronald Reagan uh, what smog does to the lungs. Dr. Pitts was the first to figure out how smog is formed in the atmosphere. I also received a master's degree in environmental and occupational health from Cal State University, Northridge. I feel blessed to have been able to both start and end my career uh, doing what I, what I like best, and that's applied research in the environmental science field. I have 42 years of environmental experience uh, and started my career out working for TRW uh, as a chemist in their environmental laboratory. I then moved on to become a field technician uh, where I worked on projects for the US Environmental Protection Agency to identify air pollutants emitted from steel foundries, uh, copper smelters, and power plants. Now, the top left picture uh, is one I took when I was uh, uh, testing for benzene emissions from uh, a Coke ovens at the Fontana Kaiser steel plant. Uh, the picture below is the one I took in our in TRW's environmental lab. Uh, I then took a job uh, as an environmental control specialist working for uh, Lockheed Aircraft Service Company in Ontario by the airport. And that's me in the bottom right there when I had hair, uh, <laughs> uh, repackaging and labeling drums of hazardous waste that had been sitting out on their wash rack, uh, leaking onto the ground. Uh, I got my first manager position at General Dynamics Space Systems in San Diego, now part of Lockheed. And uh, that's me in the upper right photo at uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, uh, doing some environmental work there to protect uh, the sea turtle, uh, which uh, we were right next to the uh, Atlantic Ocean there and uh, had to do some work uh, out there, which was pretty exciting. From there, I worked at Allied Signal Aerospace uh, headquarters in Torrance where I was responsible for managing the environmental program for 26 divisions of Allied Signal at over 100 factory locations around the world. This required me to do a lot of travel. And uh, just after two and a half years of traveling around the world, uh, I decided it was time to find a, a job that was more local. And that's when I started with uh, Lockheed Martin uh, aeronautics company in Palmdale, California, and I've been there ever since. As some of you may know, uh, Lockheed in Palmdale is home to the Skunk Works, uh, which is responsible for the development of new aircraft and aerospace technologies. We help our customers solve their most difficult challenges to achieve critical national defense missions. Over the past few years, we've won several major new programs, which involve the development of some incredibly challenging new materials and technologies, including those required for hypersonic flight, uh, low boom supersonic flight, and next generation stealth. My job over the last few years has been to introduce sustainable design methods to engineers so that these new materials and technologies we're developing are developed in a way that conserves natural resources and are environmentally friendly. Uh, one way we do this is an approach called bio-inspired design or biomimicry. Bio-inspired design is an approach to innovation where we mimic nature's structure and function at every scale and at every level from a simple form to an ecosystem to solve engineering challenges. 
uh, nature always selects the most material and energy conserving solutions. And uh, from a survival standpoint, uh, nature always makes sustainable use of the periodic table, avoiding elements that are toxic to living organisms, thus leading to more sustainable designs. Biomimicry research in the materials and engineering fields has grown exponentially over the last decade, and you're going to hear more about this exciting new STEM field from some of today's speakers. Although I can't go into a lot of detail regarding our bio-inspired design work, I did want to show you some of the examples of the types of projects we are working on and some of the organisms we are taking inspiration from. As you can see here, a wide variety of bio-inspired design studies have been explored here at the Skunk Works, ranging from fungus-based biodegradable materials to aerodynamics inspired by the structure of owl feathers to optical sensors and structural colors inspired by beetles and butterflies, to lightweight multi-purpose materials inspired by bird bones and the sea sponge. Learning from nature is leading to more fuel efficient designs and use of less toxic materials. So what will your STEM story be? Well, to have a career in the STEM field, you will need to take a variety of science and engineering classes in high school and college. Uh, for a green STEM career, you will need to take uh, some of the classes that you see pictured here. Today, the green career field is broader than it's ever been, and students can focus in on many different areas of study. However, success in the STEM field doesn't just come from developing technical expertise. For example, success in the environmental field is not just technical, but how the environmental professional communicates his or her expertise to others and the strategies they employ to gain credibility with others. Thus, it will be also very important for you to develop your interpersonal skills and cognitive skills. For example, problem solving skills are absolutely critical for those entering the STEM field. To solve problems, you will need to interact with fellow employees or fellow researchers. This is where interpersonal skills comes in, building a network, of other STEM experts is very important and requires relationship building skills. Finally, interpersonal skills or intrapersonal skills will be important as well to land and keep a job. Employers are looking for new employees that exhibit achievement orientation, self-control and common sense. As Yoda would say, Control, you must learn control. So the good news is uh, that green careers are very high in demand because of consumer demand for greener products, uh, climate change issues, expanding chemical liability, limited natural resources, and increasing government and Wall Street interest in the environment. So uh, hopefully uh, later today, you will, you will learn so, so, uh, some specific uh, information on green careers uh, from a variety of speakers, but uh, also just uh, STEM careers in general, which are pretty exciting. Today, you're going to hear from a lot of great mentors who will tell you their STEM stories. I would encourage you to engage with them and ask a lot of questions about their careers. Thank you for joining us virtually this year. We hope you have fun and educational time today. Get ready to hear about some amazing current scientific research and learn more about 
the many different fields in STEM from the professionals themselves. Stand back, we are about to do science. <laughs> 